Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be about a new doll that is actually up for grabs in my Etsy shop. He's called Adulus the Winter Pines Caribou. So stay tuned. So as usual, I'm starting off with that black chrome acrylic acrylic paint, but you can use any acrylic paint. And I'm going to be painting around the eyes, nose and mouth in black. And what I'm actually painting is a resin cast of a sculpture that I have molded in silicon and cast in resin myself. So I know I had a lot of questions about what this actually is, if it's clay or resin or anything, so it's resin. So I had a little request that I go into a bit of detail about um, my characters that I make. So uh, I'll just give you a little background story on Adulis the Winter Pines Caribou. Winter pines caribous are an essential part of clear water. They help shape the land and assist in pollination. They have an amazing set of antlers, boasting large pine leaves covered in snow and ice. Once a year, they will grow pine cones on their antlers, drop the seeds throughout the region for new pine tree saplings to grow. Usually winter pine caribous are noticed before they are seen as they have a strong aroma of pine. They are usually found in the town of Winter Pines in the region of Clearwater, but can be found throughout Clearwater and rarely into Alpine Ridge. So if you're unfamiliar with uh, the regions that I'm talking about, uh, it is a world that I have created myself. If you're interested in this world, um, let me know if you want a video down below about it and I can definitely make one for you. So I really like making these caribous with um, plant antlers. Uh, it's just something that I've been doing for a little while. I've made ones with cherry blossoms and um, just twigs and all sorts of things. So uh, I wanted to do something with a pine leaf for a while. So this guy ended up happening. So let me know in the comments if you actually like me talking about uh, the ideas for my creations uh, and then I can you know, elaborate some more in any further videos. Obviously I can't really do that with commission videos but I can sort of talk about what the customer wanted. Um, yeah, so just let me know in the comments is that, if that's something that you are enjoying. Alright, and we're coming up to the end of painting the black acrylic paint down. I usually end up doing around two to three layers of that black paint just so the coverage is uh, good. Um, so here is what it looks like so far. So I'm moving on to the eyeballs and I'm painting the iris a red. I really like the red against any sort of green. So um, I usually tend to go for a red eye with a lot of characters these days. And I'm using a red chroma acryl acrylic paint and this particular red is quite um, light so it does need a few layers to cover or what I tend to do is just cover the area in a whole lot of paint that way you won't have to uh, keep brushing on any layers and it leaves a um, smoother surface because the paint ends up running over the eyeball area. Moving on to the other eye and the same deal. Uh, you don't have to be too careful with this particular red paint just because um, it doesn't have much coverage so any black that shows through won't really uh, matter. Alright, here it is. I just love that red paint. It looks so awesome. Alright, moving on to the pupils and if you want me to do a proper tutorial on how I actually paint the pupils itself, uh, leave it in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a dry brush technique and it just involves uh, dabbing on some of that dry paint onto the eyeball and you just build up on layers once um, you are happy then you can seal it off. So I usually go for about four layers with the eyes just so it has some sort of depth and realisticness to the eyeballs. And here you can see his personality is coming out. And just going in and adding the white dust of paint to the eyeballs just to give it a little bit of character. And I just use a white chrome acrylic paint. You can use it, whatever acrylic paint you can get your hands on. And moving on to painting the hooves and these are typical caribou hooves. Uh, they've got the two things at the back and that hoof at the front. And I'm just painting up the two hooves at the back and the front with that black chrome acrylic paint 
And again, you can use whatever paint you want, but I chose to go for black with this. And I usually give about two to three coats of paint for the hooves as well. Okay, so I'm using this faux fur for the body of the caribou and it's a nice grey faux fur with a black tip and you can see I have drawn the patterns on the fabric itself and I'll be cutting it out with my scissors and remember I'm just cutting the backing of the uh, faux fur so none of the pile is cut. And I'm just cutting off the edge here because it's usually kind of gluey and I don't really want that a part of my doll. So it's easy just to trim it off and work with what you have. All right, once I've finished up uh, cutting all the pieces out, I will then pin them together, first side together that is, and I will sew it through a sewing machine uh, and just leaving the back end open and the front legs open at one side just so I can turn everything inside out. And I prefer to machine sew just because it's a bit stronger than actually hand sewing everything. But there will be some kind of hand sewing because you can't really avoid that. You just have to sew up the back end and the, the loose ends. Speaking of hand sewing, uh, I'm sewing up the tail of the caribou and I decided to go for a longer tail with this guy. I just like the look of the longer tail uh, as opposed to a short stubby tail. And I'm just using a ladder stitch to sew up this tail piece and the reason why I'm hand sewing this is because it's too small to actually turn inside out if I were to machine sew it. And it also is a bit of a problem when you're doing smaller pieces, the fur gets a bit um, too thick for the machine and it has a little freak out so I kind of avoid that because um, I don't want to keep breaking any needles on my machine. So the ladder stitch just involves going back and forth uh, but on both sides of the fabric and I usually tie a knot uh, throughout the sewing just in case I break the thread. And to finish off I just tie uh, a couple of knots at the end of the sewing just so it all steady. And the same deal with both of the legs and the back end. Uh, I won't spend too much time showing you this part just because we've all seen it before. Um, but it just involves that same ladder stitch going from uh, one side of the fabric to the other to close it up blindly. And so the fur sits flush against each other and you can't notice. Alright, so once you are coming up to closing, I then stick the fabric piece to the resin piece using a tacky fabric glue, which you can find at any sort of craft store. It doesn't matter which glue you use, I just wouldn't really recommend super glue. So I usually just pile that glue up in there, the more the merrier, uh, and just stick that fabric piece right over that resin piece. Uh, if you can feed it in there, I have a bit of trouble not to get the glue on the fur bits, but uh, if you just get it on there and then squeeze it around with your hand, you'll end up getting a nice firm connection. So I actually decided to uh, leave some markings on this caribou and I sort of steered away from the normal markings that I normally do on my dolls um, and went for a more of a geometric type marking which is kind of a, uh, what would you call it, an arrow or a triangle or something and I'm actually using a fabric marker for doing this and it, just mainly because it leaves a nice straight line so rather than using any sort of paint um, I'm thinking about making a video in the future about um, any dyes and fabric paints and markers that I use so um, if you want to see that don't, uh, maybe just like the video so I know uh, you're interested in that. Now I didn't want to go too crazy with the markings I just wanted a sort of subtle marking on the back end of the body and I also added some markings to the face which I'm pretty happy the way it turned out. Um, so again, yeah, just wanted a really subtle marking and nothing too out there.
And these fabric markers are really quick to dry, so they take, you know, maybe 10 to 15 minutes to dry, so there's not a lot of waiting around for, uh, you know, fabric to dry if you want to continue on with anything. So uh, that's something great about this uh, marker rather than using a paint. So I didn't really plan for this kind of marking, it's just what came out. Um, I tend to do that with a lot of my dolls, I don't really plan any markings unless I have a vivid image in my head. So I just sort of let it go as it comes and just see what happens. And as it says, you know, this guy wanted some markings on the back end of the body and didn't want normal ones, so here it is. So I had no intention of running this black stripe down the back end of the caribou. It goes all the way up to the top of his head. Had no intention of doing it, but it's just what ended up coming out. But I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. And just a quick peek of those markings that I did on the face. A little different from what I normally do, so I'm pretty happy with that turnout too. And here's what it looks like. Pretty happy with the way it turned out. A little different from what I normally do, so I'm glad I entered that way. And if he's not already sold, he is up for adoption. He is in my Etsy shop, which you can find the link in my description up above. And that will be it for me today guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Nat. If you have any requests, leave it in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!